In the last video, we finished constructing our trial solution for the steady state heat distribution of a rectangular plate. This had the form of some constant times an X dependence, which was in the form of the Sange function, times uh, some Y dependence, which in this case took the form of a sine function. And we said that the problem with this solution is that it can't by itself satisfy our final boundary condition, which says that if you replace X by L, you get some function of Y. And when you do that, you see that you're left with, uh, you're still left with an unknown coefficient CN and you're out of information. So you can't possibly determine what the value of CN is. What we're going to do instead is construct a solution which satisfies this boundary condition using the principle of superposition. Okay, so this solution can satisfy this boundary condition. So we're going to construct a solution that can satisfy this boundary condition by superposition. And what that means is uh, we'll call our constructed solution U. It's going to be the superposition of all of these uh, solutions. And there are infinitely many of them because you can take infinitely many integer values for N. And remember, we're allowed to do this because Laplace's equation is a linear partial differential equation. So uh, this solution that we're going to construct is still a solution to our partial differential equation. Okay, so this u sub n is this over here. So now we're going to try to apply our boundary condition to this new solution. This has u of ly. So we replace x by l. This is y. And our condition said that this has to equal to some generic function of y. And our task then is to find values for these constants c sub n from the solution. So we're going to find these coefficients by using a special property of trigonometric functions that you might be familiar with from Fourier series. And that property is, uh, we're gonna call it the orthogonality property. And that says that if you integrate uh, a sine function uh, through its period for two different integers n and m, then this is equal to uh, half this period times the uh, Kronecker delta and Remember, this is just shorthand for saying this is equal to zero. 
when m is not equal to n, it's equal to h over two when m is equal to n. Okay, and we'll refer to this as the orthogonality of of trig functions. And as you'll see, the reason for doing it is because you have infinitely many constants that you need to try to figure out. And what this will let us do is it'll let us collapse this sum to a single value uh, when n is equal to m. Okay, so we're going to take this, multiply both sides by sine m pi over h and integrate from zero to h. Okay, so this is from this side over here and we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. We're going to take out the constants from the integral so that we're only left with this. And this is an integral with respect to y. And then using this orthogonality property over here, we can simplify this integral. So that we're only left with h over two chronicle delta of n m. Okay, so this this value is just uh, the result of this integral based on the orthogonality of trig functions. And just to rewrite that over here. And we said before that what this chronicle delta does is it kills any term that n is not equal to m. And what that essentially means is that every term in our sum for which n is not equal to a particular value of m is just zero. In this way, we're only left with the term cm sinh of m pi l over h times h over two. Isolating for our coefficient cm, so that's what we're interested in. Okay, so we found a general expression for our coefficient c of m. And because we can do this for every, we can go through every value of m, every integer value, then this is the same thing as 
replacing m by l by n. This is the same thing as Cn. So we found the general expression for coefficients and therefore uh, a solution to our differential equation. Okay, so our solution is given by this expression where our coefficients over here need to be calculated for a particular f of y. And this is how uh, we can use the uh, non-uniqueness of solutions to partial differential equations to our advantage to construct a solution that can satisfy all of the boundary conditions. And in the next video, we'll see uh, a small caveat to this that might not be clear at first glance, namely uh, what we've essentially done here is built a Fourier series representation of f of y, but we never said that this function was periodic. So you might be asking yourself, how can you build a Fourier series of a non-periodic function? And we'll look at that in the next video. And after that, we'll, uh, we'll do a second example where we now look at the heat equation with time dependence and go through the separation of variables uh, method to solve uh, that new problem.